Okay, now I'd just like to preface this video by saying that developers are very dogmatic. Um, now this is neither a good or a bad thing, but it's just simply uh, a philosophy that a developer has decided to take. And this philosophy could come from anywhere. It could come from um, peers, colleagues, mentors, books, talks, conferences, or maybe even just through learned experience with a programming language. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the video. So I wanted to spend some time talking about classes in JavaScript. The reason for this is because for every person who mentions that JavaScript has a class keyword, there's another person who mentions that classes in JavaScript are not real classes. Um, you may even have heard the term syntactic sugar banded around. You can even see this term used in things such as, you know, MDN documentation. Now in computer science, the term syntactic sugar refers to things in a programming language that are designed to make certain things easier to read or express, or even potentially provide an alternative way of doing something um, that some developers or programmers may prefer over the kind of original way that you would do it. So, you know, with that in mind, you can kind of think of syntactic sugar as uh, making a language sweeter for human consumption, uh, as cheesy as that sounds. Um, examples of uh, syntactic sugar in JavaScript that uh, you may not necessarily think of are things such as map, filter, reduce, which provide syntactic sugar over uh, for loops, uh, as well as things like uh, async await, which provides syntactic sugar over promises. We can refer to things in a programming language as syntactic sugar if it's possible to take them out of the language without impacting on the overall functionality of the language. Okay, so we've got an idea of what syntactic sugar is, but why do people kick up such a fuss when it comes to uh, classes in JavaScript? So the class syntax was introduced in JavaScript as a way to make, um, make it easier to adopt for programmers who are coming from more traditional object-oriented, uh, object uh, oh Jesus, object-oriented languages such as Java, C++, C Sharp uh, to adopt. Those languages support classical inheritance, whereas JavaScript supports prototypal inheritance. Now, the issue that people have with the class syntax in JavaScript is the fact that, as we mentioned, JavaScript supports prototypal inheritance. It doesn't support classical inheritance. Now, JavaScript doesn't natively support classical inheritance, but it provides a class keyword. Okay, so let's imagine that we're creating a system where we want to have users, um, but we also want to have admin users. Now, with classes, what we could potentially do is create a user class, put all of our methods and bits and pieces inside of that class, uh, and then maybe what we could do is have an admin class that extends from the user, uh, i.e. it pulls in all of the methods and properties and so on that the user has, and then maybe we can tweak a few things inside of the admin class. Now, prior to the introduction of classes, um, we would have likely have written something such as what you can see on the screen now. Um, so instead of using the class keyword, we would simply create a function instead uh, now this function doesn't require the use of a constructor method, therefore we would just simply pass the parameters that we need into the function itself. Um, now a big difference in structure arises when we try to create inner functions. With classes we can create inner methods by just simply creating functions inside of the class, but with prototypes we have to create them after the creation of the object by adding functions as values on the prototype. However, instead of spending any more time going through the nuances of the differences here, uh, I'm going to just put all of this up into a repo and I do encourage you to take a look at it. The link will just be in the description somewhere. Now, the important thing to note is that when we write classes under the hood, it's just effectively doing the same thing as what we would have done with ES5 and kind of object creation using the prototype. We can even take a look at class creation and the prototypal object creation and if we take a look at the same thing that's being created under the hood uh, i.e if we take a look at say the admin and the admin prototype for class creation as well as uh, 
ES5 object creation, you see that it's doing the exact same thing. Now, of course, there are some gotchas, but I would only have some concern about them if I was a, a seasoned Java developer, for example, and I'd just been thrown into a JavaScript project. You know, if JavaScript is your first programming language uh, and you've had no problems with classes and the use of classes up until now, why care about what the uh, syntactic sugar brigade are so concerned with? You know, on the same token, you'll have experienced JavaScript programmers who will add, like vehemently be opposed to the use of classes because they know that classes in the traditional form do not exist in JavaScript. But again, if you're writing code every day and you're using classes and nothing's going wrong, then what's the big deal? But at the same time, this isn't to say that you don't owe it to yourself as a JavaScript developer to understand what classes are doing under the hood. Okay, and there we have it. So hopefully that video has provided a little bit of insight into what classes are doing under the hood and why you shouldn't really be so scared when people say, oh, it's just syntactic sugar. Hopefully now you kind of understand a little bit more about what that means and uh, how it could possibly impact on, on your code. Um, now, I forgot to record this bit earlier on and I wanted to just take a moment to say that um, what well, I really appreciate everyone who has subscribed to the channel so far. It really means a lot to see this grow and um, the fact that you know, you're, you're taking the time to watch these videos and kind of come along for the ride. Uh, as part of that, what I wanted to do in the future with some of the videos that I'll be covering, which predominantly will be in the field of JavaScript, was I wanted to understand a little bit more about the things that you, the viewer, potentially have issues with in JavaScript so that I can spend some time trying to kind of deep dive into them and maybe make things a little bit easier for you. So if you can, as well as liking the video and doing all that good stuff also leave a comment in the um in the comment section just telling me what things you might be interested in me covering in the future some of you have already started doing that on other videos and that's amazing so i just want to encourage you to keep doing that so that it um, gives me some more inspiration in regard to what i should cover next so yep thank you and i can see a something flying in the background. I think that might be a mosquito, which sucks.